Hello and welcome to Fearless DIY Music. My name is Tristan Lass, and today I would like to discuss outboard gear. Does outboard gear still have a place in the project or home studio? Obviously, you know, I watch other people's channels and I enjoy lots of uh, great content on YouTube. And oftentimes when you're watching people from their studio, you see walls of rack mount units all over the place. And they obviously have the money to spend to have all of that gear and a lot of it's very high end. I myself, when I was running an analog setup down here, back when this was all a mixing board and this top, there's a shelf right out of camera shot. There's a shelf up here and this shelf used to just be filled with rack mount gear because if I was doing a 16 track mix and I needed compressors, uh, outboard EQs, reverbs, you name it, delays, whatever, I had all of it up there in racks and running through my auxes on my mixer. Now that I am more in a place where most of, you know, I, I'm guessing most of the people who are watching this are, you're using a computer, you're using a DAW, the DAW has tons of built-in plugins and then you can purchase or get free versions of all sorts of different um, effects to run through your DAW. And that is super simple and super easy as long as you have enough CPU and enough RAM to run those things. Now, in that scenario where you are using a DAW and you have limited space, is it worth having any outboard gear at all? Aside from your basic interface. I mean, obviously you need that to get into the box. Um, I'm a proponent of a hybrid setup. I do use some of the plugins and I do use some of the stuff that's in the box, but I also have held on to a few key pieces of my outboard gear because I like the sound of the gear, I know how the gear works, and it just feels good sometimes to go ahead and have your hands on something and turn some knobs in the real world rather than mouse clicking or you know dragging and dropping things and things like that. So the point of this video is to encourage people who do not have outboard gear um, that it may be worth your while to check some out. And you can find a lot of, I mean, this stuff is littering the musical gear landscape. There are so many pieces of rack mount gear on reverb that are a hundred or a hundred dollars or less, sub a hundred, that are great pieces of gear that people have just abandoned. Some of it may be mine because I did sell most of my outboard gear when I moved to a DAW. But I did keep some key pieces. And I'd like to discuss what I think would be some things that people should look out for or think about getting. And uh, so you'll have to excuse me, I will be getting out my phone here in a minute to talk about my setup in the shop because I do have three pieces out there of outboard gear that I use. Um, but for right now, I'm sitting so far back in the camera shop because I'm right next to my rack. So I may be like turning and you're not, you know, whatever. I have to look at it to talk about it. So anyway, let's uh, go through what I have and what I think is of value. And I'll be honest about, you know, the cost of the pieces and whether or not I think, you know, some of this stuff is higher priority than others. All right, so let's start at the start. If you are recording live in your space with, you know, more than two or three people playing at the same time, I have a, I have a headphone amp and that's great because then you can patch everybody in and they can have their own mixes. So, and I used and have always used just this, uh, it's a Behringer headphone amp. It's a four channel. It's a really basic unit. These things you can find used, like I said, sub a hundred bucks. Uh, I've never had an issue with it. I know that there's a bad rap on Behringer and a lot of quarters, but when you're going for more of their just basic stuff, and also um, lately, like the newer stuff has gotten quite a bit better. I don't think that they deserve the reputation that they have um, as far as this kind of gear. This headphone amplifier is perfectly fine and it's relatively inexpensive. Moving down the rack, I have an Art TPS2 preamp. Now this is a tube-based preamp, so you can engage the tube 
by turning the dial here. There's a bunch of different presets, and then you've got all the usual things that you would have on a mic pre. I think in general, having at least one mic preamp in your arsenal of outboard gear is a good idea. Um, most interfaces are perfectly fine for sticking your mic into and getting a great sound out of it. But having this, and especially it being uh, tube-based, if I want to get some more warmth or I want to experiment with some different tones going into the DAW, this unit has a lot of versatility. And uh, brand new, this was like $300, I think, when I bought it. And that was a long time ago. We're talking like almost 20 years ago. It's still going strong. You know, replace the tubes every once in a while. And it's been a very good unit for me. And the thing that I like about it is that it's stereo. So if I'm running overheads on my drum kit, or if I'm recording an acoustic guitar using my Rode uh, MT5s, I put it through there just to give it that little bit of grit or warmth that uh, you won't get just through your straight through your interface. So, mic pre's, a good idea. And at this point, since I'm on a mic pre, let's talk about the mic pre I use out in the shop. I'm going to pull up my phone and look at a picture because I'm dumb that way. So, out in the shop, I have the Ultra Voice UV-1. It's also a Behringer unit, a newer one. And it's kind of one of those all-in-one rack mount units, preamps. It's got a compressor, it's got a de-esser, it's got uh, an enhancer and a gate. And I really like the unit because it's a great all-in-one solution. When I'm out there recording, I use it as my mic pre into my computer and um, it's been flawless. I mean, I feel like I have, you know, my video quality is still a little iffy and I'm looking to upgrade once I have more resources to do so for my actual camera qualities in both the shop and here, especially here in the studio. The studio, I'm lagging a bit on my video quality, but my audio quality is great because I've got all this stuff. Um, back to that Behringer unit I'm using out there, my audio has been great out there. And I'm just using a single mic, the C1000. And that outboard piece of gear is really cool. And it's great for, you know, podcasters and just anything that's a single source, single microphone, and you need an all-in-one solution. I highly recommend it, the Ultra Voice by Behringer. So those are my only two mic pre's that I have left. Um, and I use both of them regularly and they are a valuable tool and i think that it's worth investing in something like that and if you are recording audio that that behringer unit is an excellent one to check out for you know like i said podcasting or doing youtube videos or whatever you want to do all right moving down then we get into compression the murky waters of compression there is no question that uh the in the box compressors that you have at your disposal in your daw are for the most part fully adequate and they're relatively easy to use. I know that um, I've been in the weeds in the past. I used to have so many compressors and then I would go through and I'd be like, okay, I'm on a kick, you know, I'm on channel, channel 12. I need a, uh, you know, I need a compressor on my kick and then trying to dial that in and then doing that again and again and again up and down the mixing board. And now having it in the box, it's super easy to do just basic compression channel to channel using the plugins. However, that did not stop me from keeping a couple of my tube based compressors. I have an Art Pro VLA. This is first generation. This is an old one. This is like from the mid 90s. And the VLA-2, I had a bunch of those. And the VLA-2 had more knobs on it. And I found that the VLA original generation was just as good, but simpler to use because you just have a bunch of presets that are on, on buttons. So, you know, you want fast, then you press in a button. You want slow, press a button. It, it, it's super easy to use while still having threshold, ratio, and output on a knob. It's tube-based once, once again, you know, using 12 AXs. And uh, drop my phone, that's nice. 
anyway, it's uh, you know based off of a, you know it's got a tube basis to it, and it is a great compressor. You can find these guys used for not a whole lot of money. You have to be careful though to make sure that they're still in operational form. The newer version, the uh, VLA2, is perfectly good as well. Some people would prefer it because it has more versatility in the knobs. You know, you, you have more user interface uh, ability with it. Uh, those are not terribly expensive on the used market, and I would guarantee that almost any of them would still be operational at this point in time. I kept this one because I've had this unit forever, and I knew that it worked fine. So anyway, that's this compressor. Out in the shop, I have a Summit tube leveler, which is a single channel. It's not stereo. The VLA is a stereo unit, which once again, you can plug in a couple of mics and you can get a good stereo, you know, have nice tube-based stereo compression on it, which is nice to have just at your disposal. Uh, like I said, the other compressor that I kept is a Summit tube leveler. Once again, it is another tube, vacuum tube based compressor. It is the highest end piece of gear that I kept as far as outboard gear. I felt that selling it, I could have made a lot of money off of it, but since I had purchased it and I probably wouldn't be able to repurchase it if I got rid of it, I kept it. And I have that patched into my Behringer Ultra Voice out in the shop as the compressor stage. And that's another beautiful thing about the Behringer uh, unit, the Ultra Voice, is that you can patch in other effects to the overall matrix. And it's really cool because then I can just bypass the built-in compressor and use that Summit tube leveler. And that's delivered the good sounding audio that I have out there. I think that that Summit definitely adds something to the, uh, adds a little magic. Um, once again, it's a compressor. Compressors are tricky. You only really notice them when they're gone after you've been using them for a while, but uh, it's a great unit. Would I advise people to buy it? Not necessarily. If you were going to own, <clears throat> I guess if you were going to own one compressor as a piece of outboard gear, I would, and, and you were willing to spend money, I would start with the like a Pro VLA or VLA2 by Art, but if you're not into that and you want to go higher end, the Summit units are great, but they're expensive. I'm not going to lie to you about that. And I don't know if they're worth the money. I bought the one that I have just because I had the money to do it at the time. And I wanted to have a show off piece of equipment in the, in the studio where it's like, oh, I can put your vocals through this, you know, and people dug that. Uh, and that's perfectly fine, too. Moving on from compressors, uh, I have in here a, uh, another Behringer unit, and this is a parametric EQ. This is not something that you need. I'm just gonna be blunt about that. I like having a parametric EQ outboard because if I am getting down to the wire in a mix, and I've got something that's just not, not working out, and I don't feel like retracking it, I can rescue a track most of the time if it's just frequency issues by putting this uh, this this five band parametric into the into the signal chain, and I can usually route out the bad frequencies and magnify the good frequencies. So that's just a utility thing that I've had forever. It really saved my uh, saved my butt a number of times when I was running all analog. But with a DAW situation, I'm not sure you would need something like that. I have it because I have it, and I've had it for a long time. It's another relatively inexpensive piece. It's like a hundred sub a hundred dollars. Um, and then finally, the world of reverb. Reverb is you know so tricky. There are people who have reverbs that they just love. There are people who are fine with whatever reverb that they have in the box. For the most part, I am fine with most of the reverbs I come across in the box, but there are, for vocals, a couple of units that I just default to because I've used them forever. One being, this is a TC Electronic. This is the M100. This is a multi-effects processor right here. This is like another $100 unit. The cathedral setting on this for reverb is one of my favorite sounds in the universe. I have this unit patched in right here solely for that setting. 
even though it has lots of other great settings and lots of other fun things, having this to, to add to my vocals just is, is something that my ear is just accustomed to and it's something that I enjoy. The other effects unit that I want to talk about as far as reverb, well, there's the classic Yamaha SPX90, and I used to have one of those, and I loved it. Got rid of it, and then I got the second generation version, just a reverb and delay unit, and it's the uh, Yamaha Rev, R-E-V, 100. You can still find those used, once again, about 100 bucks. They're all over the place on uh, reverb. The Rev 100 has 99 presets and you can create your own. I've never created my own. I toggle between the first 15 in that unit. And I think that really I only use, and I, I know this by heart because I've been using the unit for so long. I use like settings six, seven, and nine. I think those are the, the three presets that I default to when I'm using that unit. And once again, it's because I like the sounds in it and I can't find those sounds in a DAW or with plugins. I know there's an SPX 90 plugin, but I have the unit and I like getting my hands on it to uh, use that to get some different flavors. Um, and and that, that's all I have. So I, I think that if I were to advise anybody on what to get, if you are interested in integrating outboard gear into your DAW studio, Mike Pre, I mean, that's like a no brainer. And <clears throat> I advise getting something tube based just because it's going to give you that extra analog feel. There's kind of no point. You might as well just be using your digital interface as far as I'm concerned if you're going to use a digital preamp unless it has modeling in it or things in it that are just so superior to what you'll get from your just basic interface, which is entirely true. Those units exist, but I like to base stuff. And I think that that makes enough of a difference to justify buying it. I would say number one priority is mic pre. Number two, compression. Um, I think that having tube compression at your disposal is is a different flavor. I mean, I know there's emulations of it all over the place, but actually having the unit, I think, is really cool. That would be my second priority. Third priority would be your reverberation or a multi-effects unit of some kind. I used to have uh, a couple multi-effects units, you know, the kind of rack units that have like everything in them. You know, they've got flangers, choruses, all this crazy stuff. And, uh, those are cool for coloration. If you want to buy a character piece, you can pick these things up for like 50 to 70 bucks on reverb all day long. Just the old school multi-effects units. Um, those are cool. But particularly though, I would look at your third priority being getting a great unit that has lots of different reverb sounds in it and lots of different delays for treating you know, vocals or to emulate a larger room sound than maybe what you have at your disposal in your space. And then finally, the rest is just to taste. I mean, like I said, I have a parametric EQ. Um, I am probably not gonna be using it a whole lot going forward, but I will keep it because there are instances where having like a really robust parametric EQ that is outboard can be easier to like, to my ear, it's a lot easier for me to sit and tweak a few knobs or mute some uh, mute some of the uh, frequency bands just at the at the quick press of a button rather than having to go through a drop down menu or trying to do it with a mouse. So anyway, I just wanted to talk about outboard gear, um, what I have, and what I think could be of value to others. Like I said, you know, I think the most if if I had to get rid of it all, I would keep the Behringer Ultra Voice. That 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 to me is just indispensable. I would have one out in the shop and I would have a couple here in the studio to be able to run stereo. And if I had three of those, I think that I could cover all my bases just right there with those units. Um, and they're like 275 bucks new, I think right now. So anyway, I just wanted to talk about outboard gear. I hope that this helps, uh, you know, kind of clarify what, how to prioritize, you know, how much money you should spend, which you don't have to spend a whole lot to get some cool units. 
and uh, I appreciate you uh, making it this far in the video. If you have not liked and subscribed at this point, I would really appreciate it if you would and uh, spread the word around to other people. Also, please, comments. Are there old rack mount units that you just find indispensable in your creative space? I would love to hear about them and uh, share some stories about them. All right, you take care, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.